Hi, this is Garrison Wolf, and welcome to Modern Music Composition. Um, today we're going to be talking about total harmonic relationships for voice leading. Uh, very important stuff. Now that we've learned a couple chords, um, certainly triads, and that's really all you need to understand for today's lesson are triads. Um, I'm going to explain to you what's called a tonance diagram. And what that is, is that's a way to visualize how one would harmonically move from one chord to another chord. And also, um, for example, modulation, how one would modulate from one key to another key. For example, if I want to modulate from C major to G major or C major to A minor. Um, just a brief history of this tonance diagram. Um, it was back in the 1700s that um, a fellow named um, Leonard Euler, he was actually a physicist, who came up with a diagram for relating notes in this context for this harmonic motion. And then for about the next 120 years, it sat dormant until another person came along, Hugo Riemann, who then sort of revitalized the diagram, sort of didn't completely rewrite it, but rewrote it in a way that makes it a lot more intuitive to march from one um, chord to another chord. And that's actually what this diagram is right here. It's called the Tonitz diagram. So I'm just going to briefly explain how it's constructed. Very simple. We know about the circle of fifths, very important stuff. Horizontally, all I've done here is gone across in perfect fifths, F, C, G, and D. And then what I've done to construct this uh, diagram is I've taken F up to A, and that's a major third. So I'm constructing a little triangle here. If I take A up a minor third, get to C, that unit right there, that triangle, is very important structure in the creation of this tonance. Every upside down triangle in a tonance that you'll see in this diagram is a major triad. All right, well, let's construct the geometry for a minor triad. Well, that's pretty straightforward. Let's do A minor, A, C, E. I've already got my minor third going from A to C, and then from C to E, that's my major third, and then once again, horizontally moving across, it's all in perfect fifths. A, E, B, F sharp, and onward. All, all the way chromatically, all 12 tones. Then, I've done the same thing down here, and it just goes on and on until you've reached actually all 12 tones. Um, there's more to this diagram. I've mentioned this diagram in two dimensions. It actually folds over into what's called a torus in three dimensions, but we're not going to go into that right now. That's not what today's lesson is about. Um, today's lesson is about how one would march and, and, and fold this diagram in manners to go harmonically, harmonically from one uh, chord to another, and that's what we're going to do today. So the three types of motion that are involved are P, which stands for parallel motion, R, which stands for relative motion, and L, which stands for exchanging the... Um, leading tone. So, looking at this diagram, <coughs> geometrically, I want to point out a couple things. So, I, I've taken these small, this, think, think of this as a, as a legend of, of the diagram. If you were to take one triangle that is in the, in the up direction and then fold it over so that it goes into the down direction, that's actually like taking a minor and making its relative major. And likewise, if I take this and I fold it up, I've taken a major and found its relative minor. Well, let's do that. So if I'm in major, for example, what I want to do is I want to move the third of that major down one semitone. Okay? We're going to give an example of A major. So what do I do? I take so this is the root, the third, and the fifth. If I want to find A major's relative minor, how do I do that? Well, we know by the circle of fifths what it is, but we're going to just diagram it here. I take this, and I move the third down one semitone to C, 
and lo and behold, I get A minor. A major is parallel. What does that look like? Well, here's A minor, A, C sharp, E. Here's A, A, I'm sorry, A major, A, C sharp, E, A minor, A, C, E. <coughs> I take and I fold this up, and I've now, and, and this is what makes this diagram interesting. You can see that A and C are held constant. I'm sorry, A and E are held constant, and C sharp just folds around to C. So the next type of motion is what's called the exchange of the triad for its relative, and that's R motion, and its sort of geometric structure looks like this. We're going to once again take um, the A major uh, triad to give this explanation. So what's A, A major? A, C sharp, E. Well, that is, is this triangle here. I'm sorry, that is this triangle here. Sorry about that. That's the upside down triangle that's major. Thanks. <laughs> so if I want to find its relative minor, how do I do that? I would take, and, and, and here's these, uh, here, what you keep constant, A and C sharp. I should mention, what you're doing is you're moving the fifth up to semitones. So let's, let's just do this. <clears throat> and let's move the fifth, which is E, up two semitones to F sharp. <clears throat> so I get A, C sharp, F sharp. You can see what's going on here. I've got this diagram here, which is A major. I keep A and C sharp constant. I take that E and I fold it down to F sharp, and then lo and behold, <clears throat> I've got A majors <clears throat> relative, which is F sharp minor, right? So then you just rearrange it and you have F, A, F sharp, A, C sharp. So that's how one would get from A major to its relative minor, F sharp. Well, the last example is taking, and it's called L motion, and it's similar to R, but it's sort of symmetrically a little bit different. Let's take F major, F, A, C, <clears throat> and C, C major, we'll use F, because I'm just looking at it right now. Change that to F. <laughs> And we move the root down one semitone. So if I'm at F, A, C, F major, and I move the root down one semitone, I get E, A, C. I can rearrange that to be A, C, E. And so here's my F major. I've taken it over to E, and now I'm at A minor, A, C, E. So that's actually really interesting. And the reason why is because if you look at a circle of fifths, let's diagram out a subset of the circle of fifths. Got a little bit of room here. I don't want to erase that yet. I'm just going to diagram the top portion of the circle of fifths. So we've got F, C, G, we've got A, um, <clears throat> D, and E. So this is, this is, I should write this lowercase to be, um, just so people don't get confused. Because that's D minor, A minor, <clears throat> an E minor. Well, so what we've done here in moving, uh, in, in exchanging the triad for um, the leading tone is I've taken F major down to A. And then likewise, you would go C to E. And that's the motion. And the reason why I've written out this subset is because we're just going to go through a quick progression. 
and show you how you can move through this chart for any progression. What is a progression? Well, I haven't really mentioned much of it, so I'm just going to quickly explain it. Here, let me do this. <clears throat> when you write out progressions, they're written out in Roman numerals. I'm just going to relate Roman numerals to the C major scale, just to make this real simple. But I'm going to write it in a way in which capital Roman numerals are major triads. So C, F, which would be 4 and G, which would be 5. D is 2. I'm going to write that out in nomenclature like this. E, A, which is 6, and B, which is 7, and it's a diminished 7. So when you see, hear people say, oh, that's a 1-5-6-4 one, one, Five, six, four progression. That's a one, six, four, five progression. That's a two, five, one progression. All they mean is if I write out a one, <clears throat> six, four, five progression. That's actually used a lot in pop music. Okay, um, I happen to like pop music a lot, so. Um, I love talking about pop music, actually, I, because the melodies in pop music, to me, are some of the most ingenious melodies that you can come up with. <clears throat> okay, so the 1, 6, 4, 5, what does that mean? Well, all you do is say, well, in, if I were in C major, I've got C, A, F, and G. <clears throat> Well, how do I get from C to A in the smallest number of steps? This is kind of like a puzzle, in a sense. If I'm at C major, and actually, I should write lowercase a, just to stay consistent here, <clears throat> knowing that when you look at that, you know that that's an A minor. Well, we just learned going from, in, in P motion, I take a, uh, sorry, um, C, E, G. All right, I didn't write the rest of the tonics on this direction. You would have to flip it up in this manner to get to from C major to, um, uh, I'm sorry, um, we're talking about relative. So let, let me, if I had C major, which is um, C, D, E, F, G, I'm getting ahead of myself, sorry. <clears throat> Right, wipe that off the slate. Let's talk about C major. <laughs> All right, let's go from C major to A minor. If I got C major, C, E, G, and I want to get to A minor, that's our motion. So I take and I flip it, that G, along the C, E axis, and I get to A. So going now from one to six, I did one semitone of movement. I did one step movement in in our tonics diagram, okay? Then here I am at A minor, A, C, E. How do I get to F major, which is F, A, C? Oh, I'd use an L. So let's start, I use R movement to get from C to A. Here I am at A minor, A, C, E. I now use A, C as our mirror axis and I just flip that E up to that F, that's L motion. So I went now from A to F, F major, F, A, C, A minor, A, C, E, in L motion. Now how do I get from F to G? Well, here I am in F major, wow. I gotta go down here in L motion. I gotta go this way in R motion, A to G, so boom, boom, I have to go C to B motion, I have to do an L motion again, 
And then I get um, R motion from E to D. And then I'm, here I am at G major, G, B, D. So then it's R again. Okay, that's a lot of movement to get from four to five. That's, I had to, I had to go four um, steps to do that. Okay, well, oh, and then, you know, you can get from G back, back to C. But that's how you use this chart. And I'm not going to get into the controversies of this chart because there are a couple controversies associated with this chart. But I'm not going to muddy the waters with respect to the number of steps taken in a tonus diagram versus, versus the actual number of semitone steps that are needed to change from one chord to another. Yes, there are discrepancies. But the beauty of this chart, okay, keep in mind, the whole point of using this chart is to have a nice um, sort of a uh, qualitative way of mapping out your chord progression in your mind, or if it's not a chord progression, you may be doing a, 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 a key change. You may do, be doing, um, you know, uh, a modulation from one key to another. This is a really cool diagram to use to just qualitatively on a piece of paper map out how far in distance you are from one chord to another. The shorter the distance and the least number of changes that are made in the notes, the smoother your progression. The more uh, changes in your notes in the motion, the more jagged your melody is going to be. Now, there's nothing wrong with a jagged melody. Maybe you want a jagged melody. But I'm just saying that you want to use this chart in this manner that I've explained it to map out your, your progression in, in your piece. There's, there's a lot more to talk about with respect to uh, voice leading, so I think I'm going to continue uh, on with voice leading. And also, I, I want to bring up one more thing I just thought about. I mentioned um, modulation from one key to another. Um, there's actually what's called, a, a, you, you can use tritones. We've talked about tritones. You can actually use tritones, and certainly if you have seventh chords, we, we briefly touched upon seventh chords. Um, you can use seventh chords and the tritones within those seventh chords, in particular the, the dominant uh, sevenths, to do a tritone exchange. I'll make a video of this. Um, and modulate from one key to another. In fact, maybe that'll be our, that'll be our next video, uh, just for completeness, so that you understand the uh, tritone exchange for for modulating from one key to another. But anyways, this is really cool to work with in tonal harmony, and um, I highly suggest you get used to looking at these geometric structures and just being able to fold over from one to another. And it's a lot of fun. You can come up with, you can come up with your own progression and uh, play around with it. So that's it for today, and I'll see you later.